Yeah, man. To knock only sessions with Condra. Shabbat Shalom to the home team. Now we can all say hello, wow. KTC, you know how we do. Put our power first, we never do. Hey, purple tears of joy, I love you. Purple crying, cause red loves blue. And I put it on an AI. M H O E taking off. Yeah, we dripping in that man sauce. We paid the cost, now we beat the boss. I do it for my noggins, and we do it for our home team. Allah why? Second Samuel chapter eleven verse fourteen. Let's pop up. And it came to pass in the morning that David wrote a letter to Joab and sent it, sent it by the hand of Uriah. And he wrote in the letter saying, set you Uriah in the forefront of the hottest battle and retire you from him that he may be smitten and die. And it came to pass when Joab observed the city that he assigned Uriah unto a place where he knew the valiant men were. And the men of the city went out and fought with Joab and there fell some of the people of the servants of David and Uriah and the Hittite died. Also, Uriah died also. Love to my sister, Matt Matt. She wrote a great comment. She said, you know, they're putting this sin on David that I don't believe ever happened. The translators are putting in this smudge on our ancestors, the more we got this dragonfly perspective. I mean, we're just accepting it, you know. It, they're giving us the book, we're reading it, you know what I'm saying? We're we're being loyal, you know what I'm saying? We're we're popping off. But in our loyalty, we gotta be loyal, Managa, to us. We gotta be loyal to our tribe, we gotta be loyal to our vibe, and we gotta say, what vibe did these translators, you know what I'm saying, put on our, what vibe did the scribes <laughs> put on our tribe? What vibe did these scribes put on our tribe? My sister Mac Mac said, you know, I don't believe this ever happened. They just didn't want David to be perfect. The translators did not want Dawi to be perfect. They wanted to create a new perfect, you know, hero, a new perfect knight <laughs> and shining on. David took the fall. David took the hit for their JC. David took the hit. Is taking the hit to this day. Oh, he killed a man. David killed a man. Well, I'm going to give David his dagger back. Left to Mac Mac. I'm going to say, what if this never happened? What if this is a, a story, you know, put to put some smudge on David like they do with Tamar? Every time we think about Tamar or Sheba, until we correlate the two, we can't see the repeating, you know, pattern. We can't see the repetition, the spell that they're putting on Queen Tamar. Queen Tamar is Queen Sheba. Look out how they're smudging up our queens as these harlots, right? Sheba, you know what I'm saying? This Bathsheba is now looked at as this, this harlot, this cold-hearted harlot who's bathing on a rooftop, you know, just exposing herself to the king while her man is in the battle at the front line. She ain't even tripping. She's just so at peace with him being on the front line and she's like, whatever, I'm just going to bathe and expose myself, right? And then Dawi, obviously, you know, he's like, okay, <laughs> popping off, right? So 
He invites her over, you know, just read the story in Second Samuel, my nagi. Right, so bang bow. Now she's pregnant. And then to cover it up, you know what I'm saying? Here comes this. It, <laughs> I mean, damn, I mean, look how deep this is. Look at this story. To cover it up, they have to uh, you know, transpire this 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 whole plan of getting Uriah in from battle. You know, giving him a bunch of stuff, feeding him, say, hey, man, go lay with your wife, you know, because he's trying to get him to lay with his wife to cover up the fact that he got her pregnant. So now he can say, all right, cool. He lay with her. That's going to cover up that that's my bond. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so here's this super transgression, this, this straight messy situation that's covering you forgot all that David has done for Israel. You forgot all that David's done for Judah. You forgot all this stuff because now you're into this drama. Same thing today where they do our nagas, you know what I'm saying? So-called black men, get them involved in some type of uh, conspiracy with, with some woman, you know, some kind of situation. The woman now testifies, you know, you know, Bill Cosby type of shit, you know what I'm saying? You forgot all that Bill Cosby has done as a great brother, you know what I'm saying? Whether you think he took this deal or took that deal, put that shit to the side because you don't know. You're a false witness. You don't know. All you're doing is assuming and trying to figure it out. But we have theories. We don't have fact. And that's what they go off because we'll never have the fact that we just are going to solidify ourselves in a theory. So now Bill Cosby is always going to be connected to a transgression, right? We're not going to remember the greatness of the Cosby show and what it did to see, you know what I'm saying, a couple, a strong, you know what I'm saying, couple of, of cons, you know what I'm saying? No matter what you thought they represented behind the scenes, this, man, man I'm just saying, like, just professional noggers popping off a beautiful relationship with beautiful children and having beautiful conversations. I mean, that was the image that they destroyed. Whether or not he's perfect or not, we're false witnesses. We don't know. We have to be able to accept that we don't know. <laughs> we don't know what happened with King David. We weren't there. All we're doing is going off of these scribes, man. And I'm just tired of just trusting all these scribes, man. Because we're putting our own story together. We're reading in English. We know we've been hijacked. Straight up. New Testament. So-called Old Testament. Tanakh versus this. Anything that we're getting from them in their bookstores, whatever the case, we know has a level of hijack to it. We have to accept that. But that KTC, that code, you see, they can't hijack that. That's a frequency. Put no power before power immediately connects you directly to your power. So that's unhijackable. You did. Keeping your Shabbat, it can't hijack that because you rest in in solidarity together, you charging up above the barrier, my naga. You boycotting, you know what I'm saying? You got an economic battle plan. You ain't spending no money from sundown to sundown. Man, you shutting that shit down. That's power. That's real power. But the stories that we're getting and what we're putting together and the phantoms and the duplicates and who's who is Moses King David. Did they give us one side of the story under this priesthood and Aaron and Moses and then another side of the kingship or the conship, you know what I'm saying, with with uh with uh King David, you know, and his but we we forgot that Moses also was the king of Cush for 40 years. We gotta go way to the book of Ga of Jashar, Yashar for that, right? We gotta go way to the book of Yashar for that, right? I'm just popping off, my nugget. This to knock only session. So we gotta go to the book of Yashar. And just a side note, man, you know, I just want to make one thing crystal clear. Our Pictopaleo is unhijackable. You know what I'm saying? So when, when we break down our Hawa and our breath of security, and we're talking about the Yah and the exclamation of defiance, and I told you that you got to choose your Yah. When I say you got to choose your Yah, I'm telling you that there's one Yah or Yud in our Pictopaleo that's attached to a lot of Hebrew names that has a meaning, a paleo meaning, but that's not the same meaning as the Yah that they have created, especially since the 1800s, 
as an exclamation of defiance. They hijacked the Hebrew Yud and flipped it. Same thing they do with our days. They flip our days. They turn the seventh day, whichever day that is, into their Saturday day or their Saturn day. And they flip their whole situation. They take black and turn it to black. <laughs> I mean, they, they turn you into black. They turn us black. Because we're out of code, wicked. We're we're atrociously out of code. We're atrociously wicked, out of code. That's as black as you can get. But we can't be black people no more. So I rock with the Hebrew paleo yud or yah. You know what I'm saying? The the yud. You know the arm. You know what I'm saying? Throw. You know what I'm saying? Worship, worship who? The hand, my nagi. But that's not the name. Of Hawa, that's not the name of the creator. They hijacked that into a exclamation of defiance. So I just want to make that clear. When I say Yashar, that's not hijacked because it has a Ya in it. There's nothing wrong with that Ya if it's in the paleo flow, you know, of the Yud. But if you're not trying to use that to turn it into the name of your creator, the actual frequency that's supposed to be, you know, covering. You know what I'm saying? The existence. There's no existence in that. The existence is in the breath and the existence is in the security. That's coming back home before you get your Zion, your Zion, your seventh day, seventh letter. That's the paleo flow. So we rock with, you know, Yaquab. That's not a hijack name. Somebody left a comment like, you know, oh, uh, yeah, because <laughs> we had a teachable moment on Yaquab. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? And uh, we had to, you know, make sure it was clear that Yaquab is not a hijack name. Yah is not the hijack. <laughs> okay. His Yah is referring to the Yud or the Yod or the Yod. You know, that's a paleo flow. So don't start banging on everybody with Yah in their name unless you forgot about the, the phonetics of uh, Isaiah and Jeremiah. No matter how it's spelled, it matches the phonetics of the same Yah. <laughs> Yah, uh, uh, you know, Nehemiah, you know what I'm saying? All that, man. So all that is picto paleo flow. There's nothing hijack about uh, Mariah. <laughs> all right. It's a it's a hijack when they take that and they flip it in their 440 exclamation of defiance. And that's why you got to choose up. So if you're using it as the creator's name, it's probably because you've learned it in a um, in a loop. You know what I'm saying? In a 440 flow. But if you're using it as part of a name that is connecting in the paleo flow of the Yud, the Yad, the Yud, then Halahua, Yaquab, Yapa. You know, we use all these names, but we don't use them as the name of existence. That's the hijack. And that's defiance. If you don't have your breath, <laughs> you're defying yourself if you ain't got your breath. So let's pop off, man. You know, I'm just reading this part. And it's connecting this to you in our Tanakh only session because we're looking at phantoms and duplications all day. Did this story exist, man? Love to Mac Mac. Did they make this story and David and his, you know, David killing the man just to make JC the only perfect man? But until we recon further into their own literature from their own rabbis, that there are four sinless men. Now, they didn't include David because of this story, right? Just because of this story. But his father, Jesse, Yeshai, <laughs> Yeshai, Yud, right? Yud, right? Yeshai. His father, Jesse, is listed as a man without sin. He kept the code. And his son, Daniel, Kiliab, is also a sinless man. So it skipped over David. Why? Because of this story. I mean, we don't know. We're just putting it together. But I just don't want you to be so solid because you're reading something out of, you know, you know, these scribes in this translation. You know, don't come up with uh, some absolute on your ancestors because you're reading a story translated by their scribes. You know what I'm saying? You got to be a free thinker and you got to just think about why they would put this story in. And also shout out to Benjamin and shout out to Managa Amram, Moses' pops. Who was also a sinless man. I mean, did they, did they do the same thing with Moshe? 
so they could pass the rock to Joshua so that they can create a reflection of Joshua and call him Jesus, a perfect man. What transgression did Moshe really commit? And did David really commit this? Putting Uriah, the Hittite, or Uri, and as we're digging on Queen Tamar, her Uri, just like this Sheba and this Uriah, <laughs> who's her husband at first, right? Now, Uri, with the Georgian connection, the Georgian chronology, Managa, the Georgian genealogy, this Uri, Uriah, over with Queen Tamar, he's going to war against Queen Tamar. He's He's rebelling with the Georgian dynasty, my nugget. He's rebelling against the queen. He's rebelling against Israel. But this is an Israel on Israel war. So there was a reason for putting down that Uriah because he rebelled against wow. his own queen, against Queen Tamar or Queen Sheba. And they flipped it over here. They made Uriah this saint. You know, no, I'm not going to lay with my wife. Because everybody's on the battlefield. I need to go back to the battlefield and all this stuff. So they made him this saintly figure and they made David this low life, right? And just that one story, man. And you forgot, just like Bill Cosby, just like all this stuff. I mean, think about my naga Cat William, man. Shout out to Cat Williams. All the all the smut, the media and everybody try to put on him. They forgot about all the greatness of his comedy, the realness of his comedy, the connectivity of his comedy. They overshadow that for all the smut. They overshadow, you know what I'm saying, Bill Cosby <laughs> for all the smut. They're overshadowing Queen Tamar because every time you hear about Tamar, just like in Genesis with Judah, she's supposed to marry Judah's son. She's promised to him. And then she plays the harlot to sleep with big Judah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And then, and then what she get pregnant. I mean, it, Look, now she's playing a harlot over there, and then you got Tamar Sheba playing a harlot again, you know what I'm saying, on the rooftop, exposing herself. Like, come on, man. It seemed like they really want a dog queen Tamar, man. And you forget about the greatness of, of this aqua popping off and leading on the front line, leading the army on the battlefield because our aquas be popping off. Did y'all forget Queen Sheba, Queen Tamar? Yeah, you did, because they labeled her a harlot now, right? In every story. Yeah, you forgot about Dawi, because they labeled him a murderer, <laughs> right? Oh, you know, <laughs> he's a murderer. Forget all that other stuff. I don't want to murder his king. Oh, no. Come on, man. I don't want a king that, that's just going to, you know what I'm saying, take my wife while I'm on a battlefield that's the most low life shit you could, you know what I'm saying? Like, they thought about this. They meditated on your destruction, man. And, you know, I just wanted to pop off with that. Let y'all know, man, in real time that we here and we see clear, you know what I'm saying? And we can't always take one thing, you know what I'm saying, as, as a solid fact when all this is but a dream. All this is but an illusion, you know what I'm saying? The way that they've remixed us is illusionary you know what i mean we're in an we're in the matrix you know what i mean so if you want to get reality you're gonna to have to free your mind <laughs> you got to unplug you got to look at the story read this drop with a dragonfly perspective amen shout out to the dragons on the wall and everything you do for keeping it flowing man at four three two and everything that we're able to do you know what i'm saying and all the energy we could put in and just bring back by breaking through all these, you know, books and reading this drop and connected, man. Shabbat to Shabbat. You know what I'm saying? Like, this is all happening, my nigga. Because you really are, you know, committed, my nigga. <laughs> we are having a commitment right now. You know what I'm saying? That we can do all the greatness, man. All the vision. All the flow. We are committed to. We are consistent. Hey, shout out to my consistent cons. And y'all been getting at me. You know, for joining up with the Ether Squad, man. And I really need y'all. And you know what I'm saying? We need, our tribe needs us. You know, more than anything, our tribe needs us. You know what I'm saying? So I'm putting the, I'm putting that call out to the consistent cons that truly want to, you know, be there 100 in Baruch, 100 or nothing. You know, this ain't no hobby. This ain't no sideshow. If you're here 
to build, to build this fence, my nigga. You know what I'm saying? If you're here to, you know, really um, make sure that we got, you know, everything, you know, crossed, everything dotted, you know what I'm saying? Everything protected, you know what I mean? If you're here to be a wall of protection and say, okay, I could do this, you know, I know I can, I know I could show up this way, you know what I mean? It don't have to be just on the ether squad. It could be behind the scenes. It could be, you know what I'm saying, just as mentors, you know what I mean? Or just as students, you know what I mean? That just, you know, want to want to learn and, and, and just be someone that, you know, can support and, you know, just give back. You know what I mean? We got a lot of things that we want to do and nothing comes before KTC, which is why we had to take a step back and just make sure we KTC. And with that, you know what I'm saying, we inmate Joey, we, you know what I'm saying? We put the most high over everything. And with that, we start dripping in our mem songs, man. You search for a you know what I'm saying? You get that water, you know what I mean? This is where we're at right now. So now that we got that, now that we got that in order, my nugget, we got order. When you think about Drop Nation, you don't have to wonder about who we are and what we stand for. This ain't no religion, this is the home team. This is what the indigenous, the, the Indians of India appear. We have a code. We're connected to our creator, our great spirit, right? And we're connected to our land. We're getting our land back. That's what these Tanakh only sessions are for. So we can check into something real. You know what I'm saying? I just wanted to come from the hard bone in this Tanakh only session. I didn't want to, you know, just read to you the whole time. I just wanted to ask you a question. Would they hijack Con David by giving us another focal point? Giving us something else, you know what I'm saying, to, you know, just take away, take away a flow that we know, you know what I'm saying, that we truly will desire. Why would Hawa say in Hosea 3, <laughs> you know, why would Hosea 3 say search for Hawa and King David if King David is a king that's just going to you know, snatch your wife <laughs> while you're on the battlefield. You know what I'm saying? Like, those two things just don't add quite up. I understand, you know, oh, you know, he's fighting with a man and he, he loses it and just beats his, <laughs> you know, beats him to death. And you're like, oh, no, he, he just killed the man. He's like, oh, man, just killed the man. But in this case, you know, it's a premeditated murder. It wasn't in a heat of battle it was premeditated the way they did David. And that's that type of premeditation, you know what I'm saying? That's a sicko type of thing. That's a sick shit thing, you know what I'm saying? Oh, you know, I'm going a, I'm to a kill her husband, my mighty man, my guy. That wasn't just David's, you know, homie he knew through somebody. That was one of his mighty men. You think he would premeditatively? I'm just surfing away with Mac, Mac. Hey, hey, if, if only me and Mac Mac are on his way right now, that's all good, man. I just wanted to come from the hard bowl because Mac Mac asked a very, you know, serious question. Hey. I could, I could admit, you know what I'm saying, that I would love, I would love to, you know, uh, paint a beautiful picture of King David, man. You know what I'm saying? Because... Even even in the worst of it, you know, I believe in change and growth. So even if it was as it is written and all that is is what it is, I still rock with Con David because I believe in the choose up ability of a David. You know what I'm saying? If that was repetitive behavior, if you kept reading story after story after story of King David killing a man and taking his woman, <laughs> if that was his M.O., then I could say, all right. He twisted, you know what I'm saying? Like, I can't even, I can't rock with this dude because he, th this is who he is. But, you know, everyone got a past and a history and everyone got things that they're ashamed of or, or whatever the case is, you know what I'm saying? So it's like, you know, everyone has had low points, man. You know, and that shouldn't define you. So even in that situation, I still wouldn't define David by that particular moment or flow. You know, I would just say, damn, well, Hawa forgave him. You know, he, he lost his first son with, Bathsheba, he lost Absalom in the war, the the David on David war, you know what I'm saying, the Judah on Judah war, and you know, he, he took his L, but 
could they have created a story so deep and, and just manipulative and, and premeditatedly, you know, uh, evil, you know what I'm wow. saying? Um, I mean, that's not just murder. That's like, you don't got your, your homie back at all. Like you ain't got your man's back at all. Like you're a snake. If you would do that, if you would really do that, you know what I'm saying? With, you know what I'm saying? The, the adultery of it all, I mean, and the murder of it all. That's, that's, that's deep. You know what I'm saying? That's not like an accident. You thought about this. You invited her over. Y'all did what you did. You continue to do what you did. And even after you killed that man, then you just pop off in a happy marriage and you have Solomon, the richest, most powerful king of all time. With the most high Baruch Solomon, like this chosen super king. <laughs> And that type of transgression of murder and adultery, that shit just don't line up. I'm just surfing away with Mac Mac. <laughs> I'm just surfing away with Mac Mac. I'm just trying to look at this thing and say, would, would Hosea 3 tell you to search for the creator and King David if he was some sick premeditated murderer that would snatch up your chick while you was on the battlefield? And then Baruch Solomon as the most, you know, wisest king. He got he, he got all all the uh, uh, <laughs> he got all the wisdom, right? And, and make him like the wisest, richest king of all time out of adultery and murder. Premeditated. That's like almost. Now, I can see if he just let him rock like he killed the first son. But how would Hawa go from killing the first son to blessing or, you know, giving that Baruch to Solomon later on? And, and he gets maximum Baruch because Hawa loves David. Why does Hawa love David so much if David was capable of doing something like that? I mean, if he does, he does. I'm with it. I rock with it. But does the story make any sense? Like, again, I could see if he, he gave Solomon some Baruch, you know, and he let him live. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? He, uh, you know, made sure he was good. Like, he made sure everybody was good. But he gave him max Baruch. You know what I'm saying? Maximum Baruch. That's, that's like validating yeah, well, Solomon and Sheba were just meant to be together, but it took murder and adultery to get together. My Nagas, for the Dragonfly perspective, I'm rocking with Mac Mac on this. Because, you know, I never really thought about it, to be honest with you. I just sort of, you know, say, hey, man, if it was good with Hawaii, it's good with me. But now we're just looking at how they're doing Queen Tamar, how they're doing our Aquas, our Queen Sheba's, and making them harlots, bathing on a rooftop, exposing themselves to kings or whoever, you know, while their man is on the front line battling for, for your kingdom. One of David's mighty men. Loyal men. Unless Uriah wasn't so loyal. And when we match up the chronology situation with, you know, this, this Georgian Bragatoni dynasty situation, then now we got Yuri. See, like they were they were arranged. It was like an arranged marriage. Uriah or Yuri and Queen Tamar or Queen Sheba. Their mirror images. Alright, they're both in previous marriages with Uriah's or Yuri's, which is short for Uriah. They're both in pre-arranged situations. But in the Georgian flow, which I will have to rock with just because it's so hidden and no one talks about it and you know what I mean it's not on the radar. Your Bible is on the radar, man, but this story isn't. With this Tamar and and your Uriah. But he ends up, you know, growing salty over some stuff, whatever. You know what I mean? You read the story, you read Con, Press the John 67, Press the John 68, look out for us, man. I'm just saying, you're Yuri goes against Queen Tamar with an army. And Queen Tamar leads her men. 
her army. I'm talking high Amazon queens. Remember, we're talking the high Amazon queens. Rubadi, Gadi, and Mani. I love to my aqua. They say, yeah, that, that must be the names of the three Indians. Rubadi, Gadi, and Mani. But does it stand for Ruben, Gad, and Manasseh? <laughs> I mean, my naga, it's a beautiful flow we got. You know what I'm saying? This is Tanakh only session because only we can dig on Tanakh and, you know, have a dragonfly perspective. Maybe talk about things that are uncomfortable, uh, but we got to expose the fact that, you know, nothing we're reading, you know what I'm saying, is 100 percent fact. It's only it got to line up. The frequency got to be right. It got to be 432. You got to see the duplications that they did with J.C. and the perfection that they made him. This one perfect man, this J.C. over there in the New Testament becomes the perfect man. Now look at how, look at how reversed and um, what you call it, uh, inverted. This is an inverted story with this JC. Because now David is this adulterer, slanderer, premeditated murderer of his homie, of his main man. Your Yuri, <laughs> Uriah, right? But. You forget that this is the only anointed king. That this king was anointed directly by Hawa. The only anointed king, my not. Anointed directly as a course correction for Israel. Hawa gave us a course correction. Hawa gave us an anointed Khan just to make him an adulterous murderer. So the world now remembers David for that. The world now remembers Bill Cosby for that situation, right? I'm just showing you what's happening. You forgot about the greatness of the Cosby show. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You, you forgot about at least the image of a successful, you know what I'm saying, young so-called African-American, you know, family growing up together. And yeah, you know, one's a doctor, one's a lawyer. We might look at it today like, oh, okay, well, they was all super pro uh, professional boule hijacks. And da -da -da. All right, man, but... At least it wasn't these images, you know what I'm saying, we're seeing today. You know what I mean? At least it was a family show. Not like all these knockoff family shows they got now. All this ratchetness and, and, and you know what I'm saying, mammy this and, and, you know, all these images. We didn't got no, no successful, beautiful family that sticks with each other. No, man, we got The Wire. We got Snowfall. <laughs> we got all this other stuff, man. I'm just saying, man, that was a powerful image, man. At least made you strive to be a family and to be united and to work together and to tribe up to work with your neighbors. You forgot about that. You forgot about Bill Cosby's stand up comedy. The genius he was, you know what I'm saying? The genius he is, man. Oh, oh, oh you want to look at the flaws, right? But what if they create the flaws? Or what if they magnify the flaws? I'm not saying David is flawless. I'm saying maybe they're magnifying. Are they magnifying, you know, uh, some flaws in Queen Tamar or Queen Sheba and making her a harlot in, in the book of Genesis with Judah having to, you know, disguise herself as a harlot to sleep with the father of the man that she's supposed to be marrying? Come on, man. And how does that make Judah look? How does that make Judah look? Oh, he's just rolling down the street, picking up harlots. He's just rolling down the street, picking up harlots all day. This is Judah. Why are they doing this to Judah? Why are they doing this to, to Queen Tamar, Queen Sheba? And are they doing it to Con David with this murderous story? Wow. Hey, we just popping out. Dripping in that man's sauce. We paid the cost. Now we beat the ball. Hey, 432, we the freak show. KTC, that mean keep the code. Wow.